we're going to talk about a new technique we've developed to toolpath optimized files straight from CabWriter using Vectric software. So just to set the stage a little bit, in the past we've had to pull in all of the, the vectors as they're called um, in uh, the Vectric software, uh, which is basically all of our parts that were generated by CabWriter um, into the Vectric software. And in this case, I'm using Cut2D Pro, but this works for Aspire as well and, and all of their other packages. Um, and we would pull in all the individual DXF files from CabWriter, and then we would nest them. And it would look something like this. Uh, so I'm going to assume you already know how that works in this video. Um, but just recently with CabWriter 4 and now CabWriter 5, we are also able to essentially nest or optimize your parts onto sheets of plywood. Here's an example of that. And I'm also going to assume you know how to get to this point in uh, CabWriter as well. So the other advantage that we have given with uh, CabWriter now is that we can print part labels out of CabWriter for all of these parts. And not only that, when we print the labels, we print them in order of starting with sheet number one in the lower left, and we, we cycle through all the parts here. So it's very easy to find the labels when you're cutting the parts, and that saves quite a bit of time. So the problem we've had in the past is you could bring those parts into Cut2D Pro or Aspire or uh, whatever software you're using from Vectric, and you could nest it, and you could print the labels in CabWriter because they don't have label printing in the Vectric software, but the, uh, the labels obviously wouldn't match because we're not doing the nesting. So there's been some desire to have the ability to... Um, pull those pre-optimized DXF files out of CabWriter into the Vectric software and do the toolpathing quickly. And you could always do that by creating a toolpath template and pull uh, one sheet in at a time. So that's what you would have to do is pull this one sheet in, load the template, apply the template, save the file, and then move on to the next file, which um, is certainly doable, but takes a, a fair bit of time. So uh, Vectric offers the ability to write for third parties to write something called a gadget. Gadgets are up here in this menu, and there's a bunch that, that come typically with your installation. Uh, but we wrote a new one called Import and Toolpath Optimized DXF Files. And what that's going to do for us is allow us to uh, sh uh, pick a directory full of optimized files and run the gadget and it'll uh, grab one file at a time, pull it in, do the toolpath, save the toolpaths off and then pull in the next file and so on until you're done. So uh, after you've downloaded the, the gadget from our site, you need to install it. And where you install it is if you go to your file explorer. So I'm using Windows 10 on the Mac. So I'm using Parallels to emulate uh, the Windows environment. So if you're Windows users, you'll know, um, you'll get there through your normal uh, explorer. And if you're a Parallels user, you just gotta get your file explorer. And you're gonna go to your local disk C, program data, Vectric, Cut 2D Pro in my case. You might have Aspire or something else. I'm on version 10.5. And then there's a folder called Gadgets. And you're going to want to drop this the file in that you've downloaded from our site, the import and toolpath optimized DXF files. And just drop it in there. And then you're going to restart your program, your Vectric program. And once you do, you will have um, this gadget here. All right, so your next step is to, back in CabWriter, you're gonna create all these files. 
and uh, they are going to be put into a uh, subfolder within your project. So this is the project I'm working on. Uh, you pull up the project folder and then there's um, another folder in here and in there you've got your choice between individual DXF folders, integrated DXF files, and sheet folders. So the, in, uh, the individual DFX, DXF folders are the uh, one part per DXF file. So we don't want that. That is if we were going to bring it into uh, Vectric software and have it do the nesting, you could use these individual files or you can use these integrated files. So this is one uh, DXF per material type with all the parts of that material type in the file. So you can also pull that into Vectric software and, and nest it, which is the traditional way to do it. But what I want to do is, is process these sheet folders, first of all, maybe with my uh, three-quarter inch material. And we've got nine sheets here um, that are already pre-optimized as shown here. So we want to be able to pull them in one by one to the uh, Vectric software and apply our toolpath template. And I do talk about creating toolpath templates in another video. Uh, all that's doing is uh, creating uh, toolpaths that are related to the layer names. So the layer name uh, this particular layer name, which is a drill uh, layer uh, going all the way through the part at 0.75 inches. Um, every hole on that layer I want to apply the same toolpath to. So I create a toolpath for that layer and then I create a toolpath for this layer and, and so on. And then I can save all those toolpaths as a template. And you can uh, load up those templates manually from here and apply them and save it and do all that which I which I showed in another video however here I want to show you how to use this gadget to accomplish the same thing much more quickly now I have to do a disclaimer here a very big disclaimer and that is if you're going to tool path say 10 sheets of plywood and just run out to your CNC and cut them you'd be very uh, wise to double check that this is really doing what you expect. In other words, what I did to verify that this was doing what I expected it to be doing is I manually toolpathed a sheet uh, by doing the traditional pulling it in, pulling the toolpath in, um, saving it, and so on. And then I used this gadget to do it, and then I compared the two files, or spot checked the two files to make sure, the output files, to make sure that uh, they were the same because I don't want to go and screw up a bunch of sheets of plywood uh, without double checking things. So I would say the first time you use this, um, you should do some careful double checking that is coming out the way you want. And then you can even uh, load those files up into your CNC and set the Z value higher so it's not actually cutting and verify that it appears that you're cutting uh, what you think you're cutting for each sheet. All right. So let's see how this works. So what I'm going to do is create a new empty file. That's how we start. And as normal, you set your job width, job height, um, and thickness. And whether you're zeroing off the machine bed or the material surface, and where you're starting your XY. So I'm 96 by 48 by 3 quarters of an inch. And it's very important that these dimensions, well, X and the Y, match what you set for that material type in CabWriter so that the uh, sheet size is exactly the same. And then make sure you set your thickness to whatever thickness parts you are uh, going to be dealing with and that your XY is set for uh, the way you like it on your CNC. Um, so this is the way mine um, is set up. So I'm uh, Got my new blank sheet here. I'm going to just click on tool paths and pin it here so I can see what's going on as we as we go through things. All right, so now I'm going to run the gadget. So we just go up to gadgets and say import 
and toolpath optimized DXF files. And it gives me this dialog box. So I need to choose the directory that I want to process. So for me, I need to get to, um, let's see. Got to get back to the Mac side here. Documents. A little bit of a long. I'm sure that uh, if I was a Windows expert, I could uh, get there a little faster. All right, here we are. So now I just follow down to my sheet folders, and I'm going to choose um, my pre-finished three quarters of an inch, 48 by 96. So that is my directory to process. Then I have to select the uh, template that I've created in the past for that. So I've already got this created. It's for a shop bot, three quarter inch, carcass parts, no pockets, um, tool path file. So I gotta make sure I grab the right one there. You gotta choose your post processor. In this case, I've got a shop bot one that I normally use. There's, hopefully you already know about the post processors if you've done this before. And then um, we need to choose an output folder. So I'm going to just use this one that I've been using. Um, and uh, let me just clear out the... Uh, files that are in there so we can show what we got we're done and then I want to look down here and I'm just uh, repeating the job settings for you here so with just one last double check um, prior to doing it so 96 by 48 by uh, 3 quarters of an inch bottom left corner and material base for my Z origin. So that all looks good. So now I say OK. And now we start pulling in the files one by one. So it's a good idea to look at the file that's pulled in and just make sure you, it seems like it's something that looks correct. And now it's going to be as if I just ran this toolpath against this sheet, or all these four toolpaths. You can see my toolpath consists of um, system hole layer, one for construction holes, one for small parts, outside profile, and one for large parts. So um, I'm going to make sure that that all looks good. And it, what it's telling me here, this is the normal Vectric uh, error message, not error message, but uh, notification that I'm drilling a little deeper than the thickness of my material, which is I'm doing on purpose to make sure the hole goes all the way through. So I'm just going to say OK. And it's showing me now that it created all four tool paths for this file. It's telling me which ones it did. Um, just it's worth double checking this, make sure everything looks good. Um, and then say OK. And what it did was it cleared it cleared uh, that file out, saved it off, I'll show you that in a minute, and pulled in the next file. And apparently there's no system holes on this uh, sheet, so it's telling me uh, unable to uh, calculate the toolpath for system holes, so it's deleting that toolpath. Same with the construction holes. Uh, didn't find any small parts either. but. It considers all these all large parts. So we only have one tool path for this for this sheet. So that's what will get saved off. And we'll go through one more here. Because um, there's nine sheets. So there's no small parts on this one, so it's deleting that one. Just kind of make sure that this all makes sense, as if you were doing this yourself. Um, so I'm saying OK. So that one had only saved, um, it saved three of the tool paths, but not the uh, small parts one. So now I'm going to go through this a little bit uh, quicker. This one only has two parts on it. So we got to hit OK to get through all nine sheets here. 
and I would I would do this a little slower just to make sure that uh, everything looks okay although I'm kind of glancing at it so here's a summary so I've processed nine sheets it's telling each of the sheets in which um, tool paths were skipped and which ones were saved so it's worth double checking that yet again close that and we go and look and uh, we go to our output file and here we can see we have nine files with the s.sbp um, at the end which means it's for the shop bot so the reason it saved all these tool paths to one file so it saved all four tool paths into this one file if there was four tool paths and that's because it does an internal double check to see that you've chosen uh, either all of your tool paths use the same tool or uh, you've chosen a uh, post processor that supports tool changing uh, my post processor supported tool changing uh, they didn't use all the same tools obviously some were drill paths and some were um, profiling paths um, but because I chose a post processor that that uh, supported tool changing it saved them all to the same file so let me show you real quick what would happen if I'm going to kill these files and I'm going to just take uh, a few of these files out of my folder so we don't have to go through nine of them and I'm going to show you what happens if I run this again but choose a uh, post processor that doesn't support tool change um, also, one thing to note here is you can process subdirectories too. I don't have that checked here. Um, if I did have it checked, it wouldn't be a big deal because there are no uh, subdirectories. Uh, this is still uh, the same as it was last time, so I don't have to select that again. Uh, obviously, if I was changing to a new um, folder of parts, I would have to change that and probably pick a different toolpath uh, template like maybe my half inch one and now I'm going to choose a different uh, one that does not support toolpath uh, so this one's always going to default to whatever you've got set as the default within the vectric program to start uh, but once I change it here if I run this again it'll it'll keep pulling up uh, whatever the last processor you chose but it won't change the default one within the Vectric program. Right, so I'm leaving my output files there. Uh, you double check everything as normal. It's all going to look the same here. It's just going to keep running through the um, uh, toolpath files. This, these two sheets happen to each have um, all four. And it's going to show me that it saved them all. But now when I go to my output folder we'll see that we've got eight files here one tool path per file so sheet one um, it's got the name of the the sheet that cab writer gave it dash the name of the uh, tool path and then uh, the um, the last part here is going to correspond to the uh, to three uh, letters corresponding to the post processor that you chose and then we can see sheet 2 has four of them as well so uh, that's how you use this um, again it's basically just automating what you would normally do um, to pull in your toolpath templates and apply them to the various sheets but now you don't have to nest within vectric software you can let cab writer do it and take advantage of the fact that the cab writer prints labels um, that correspond to the sheets. So uh, I would uh, go back here and I could print out these sheets. So I had my printout, print out my labels, and then I'd have my files that I could send to my, my uh, CNC machine. But I hope this helps and let us know if you have any questions.